Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you an amazing feature that just got added in .NET 10 Preview 4 which completely changes how we do integration testing in .NET. Now .NET is amazing for integration testing. In fact, most developers nowadays write more integration tests than unit tests because they can cover so much more so reliably because it's a top-down approach because we're using the web application factory. But as amazing as this thing is, and I will explain what it does in this video, it had one shortcoming which is basically a good thing, but if you need to do certain things, it's not. So in this video, I'm going to show you how this introduction fixes integration testing in some scenarios and also allows you to do acceptance and end-to-end -end tests. So let me show you what I have here. I have a .NET 10 project and I have a customer's API. It doesn't really matter what's in the API. It's just a standard sort of API. And this project I'm using when I'm running testing workshops, um, it's the same thing I'm using as well on my testing courses on DOM trend, unit testing, integration testing. By the way, the code is still active. Beth, they do a checkout for 40% off everything, link in the description. But here I have some integration tests and I want to show you what I have in the integration test. So I have some customer endpoints and all I'm really doing here is I have a shared collection. I'm spinning up a web application factory in the form of this custom API factory. So I'm representing my API in tests using this. And then I'm using a lot of fancy things that I teach in my courses and workshops where I use Responder, I use uh, test containers, I use Verify, I use many, many things to make amazingly reliable and very, very performant integration tests. So if I want to test five things about my API, so however many endpoints I have in my tests, all I need to do is do all the setup I've done already in, in that customer API factory, then spin up the client. And this client, as you can see, will be initialized with this create client call, which is the HTTP client of the web application factory which is basically a way to spin up your API, your .NET API, without exposing it to the web in an e-memory fashion. And then this HTTP client is able to call it, and that's extremely fast. How fast? If I go here and I run all of my integration tests, then as you're going to see, it's going to build, spin up a container, but as you can see here over my head, once the, the setup is done and all the execution is done, then it is incredibly fast. We're running this in less than a second, 614 milliseconds, actually. Now, this test failed because of configuration reasons. I can remove this part over here, this port. And, and if I run my tests again, then everything will pass. So as you can see, everything is blazing fast. They all pass just like that. And to a huge degree, this is the way I do my configuration, my containers, like everything. This is the real API, by the way, running migrations and containers in Docker. However, if I go ahead and I just debug this and I put a breakpoint here on this test, the application will start. And as you're going to see on the HTTP client, if we eventually hit this breakpoint, as you can see, the client has been initialized, but it points to this HTTP localhost. Now, you can't really call that. If I go on Insomnia and I say, hey, call the customer's endpoint on this API, which is presumably still running because the test haven't completed, then what you're going to see is I don't understand what you want me to call. This doesn't exist. This isn't anything. And if I use, you know, the proper port of 5000 or whatever, this still doesn't exist because the magic of the web application factory by default is that it doesn't really expose anything on the network. That's until .NET 10 because .NET 10 finally introduces a way for you to be able to use Kestrel, the built-in web host, to basically expose this API to the network. Why would you do that? Because there is a massive use case for it that up until now you couldn't really deal with. And that is primarily, not exclusively, but primarily web UI tests. So here I have a Blazor application has the same context as the customer API, this customer management. And in my tests, I have to go through an entire different approach using Docker files over here and Docker Compose and building a Docker Compose using fancy stuff to use Playwright to run my UI tests. Modern applications use reactive UIs like Blazor, React, Vue, and all those things. So you can't just pause the HTML, pause it, and then try to figure out, does this thing match to this? That's very confusing because things change all the time as you interact with the UI. So in that case, you'd want to call the server and get a response on something that is changing all the time using Playwright. However, you can't really do that with Playwright currently. So in order to do that, we would have to have a way to expose this web application factory 
to the network so somehow Playwright can then call it and interact and we can test very, very nicely. So how do we do that? Well, right before you initialize your server, you need to do two things. First, use Kestrel. This is new. And second, start server. That's it. These two things before you create the client, because the create client call is what initializes the server, will give the instructions to the application factory to create an accessible server now. So if I go back to my tests and I change the port again on the test I just reverted, which is checking this to 5000, because that's where this will be exposed by default. Then if I go and I run all of my tests again, as you're going to see, same execution as before, equally as fast, they all pass 314 milliseconds, so you don't lose anything in performance. The criticism is you add a bit of flakiness because we have now this network call and things can go wrong in network calls, but nothing is really lost in terms of performance. You have to keep that in mind. And if I go now and I debug this test again, then I'm going to go back to Insomnia once this breakpoint is hit. And now it is hit. Yes. So I'm going to go now to Insomnia and I'm going to call that endpoint to get all the customers. It's going to freeze because I have a breakpoint because I'm debugging. So the server itself is part of the debugging process. But if I just step a couple of times, then if I go back to Insomnia, maybe if we hit an await call like this one, then that will free up the thread to give me a response. And this is now accessible on the network. It means any tool, any HTTP client that, that wants to access this now through the network can. So if you're going to just rewrite all of your playwright tests to not use custom Docker Compose files, but actually use the network provided address, this will oversimplify your tests. Again, you don't lose anything in terms of performance. It's just that flakiness aspect that you add that you could have eliminated by just using the in-memory client. And yeah, in the grand scheme of things, there is a bit of performance, but if you do your client initialization smart, like I've showed in potentially other videos, but primarily my courses and my workshops, then you will know this is extremely fast. That's it. It's two lines of code. I know it's something you could just read on a blog in two minutes, but I want to give full context because you need to understand why you need it. Just the fact that this is added doesn't really tell you much. In fact, it's the last thing on the list of the things that were added and people are just brushing it off as it's not a big deal, but it is. This fundamentally changes how we write our tests. But now I want from you. Have you had this problem in the past? Because I know I had and I had to fix it in a very hacky way, which I wasn't happy with. So that cleans up my code and fixes my performance a lot. But I wonder from you, leave a comment down below and let me know. And what else would you want to see the web application factory to be able to do? Let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.